Hello everyone and welcome to more How Good Are Well today we talk about some dead people, but not Hana because I did a video about her not too recently ago. Uh, but we're going to start today by talking about Kanai. So Kanai, as you all know, is a dark type um, blast gorilla who is unlimited and have, therefore is already a pretty good character. So I could already close the lid here and say, yeah, she's pretty good and move on just by seeing that. But let's actually dig a little bit deeper than that. So you see that her stats are pre actually quite all right across the board. She still has decent attack while still having um, pretty good defense and pretty good HP as well. So, so we see that her stats are doing pretty decent. Um, if we look further below, we uh, of course see a spirit house. We're gonna go towards that later. But for now, her connect and there's some weird stuff going on because there was actually a patch at some point. Um, where she was buffed, so she was one of the only characters that ever got buffed. I think the other one was Kirika, who got buffed once. But yeah, she got a buff once, and I'm just gonna go over what uh, her current um, uh, fit, like Connect Magia, etc., do on the uh, Japanese server, because of course, you know, American server is dead. So if we look at what her Connect does, it gives 40% attack up, it removes debuffs from the target and gives 40% status aim and resistance up for three turns. One of the very few Connects that actually does something for multiple turns, which is actually rather interesting. So if we look at this, we see that, okay, this is very specialized, very specialized about this idea of getting rid of um, or even preventing Anything that could harm your characters, not just via damage, but via debuffs, via status ailments, all the, uh, that sort of st sort of things. And that sort of theme also continues with the Magia, which removes debuffs from self, or as a double, removes debuffs from all allies. It also buffs all allies with status aim resistance, 50% at Magia level 5, which is quite high actually. You only really need one, and if you like, have a Madokami lying around uh, as well, then you don't really have to worry too much about status ailments anymore. So this all seems really awesome. You see that she is really built around the moving debuffs, getting the stars aiming up. But let's look at her spear enhancement as well. Does the theme continue? Well, something that we see for some reason is that out of all of her disc buffs, the highest disc buff she gets is XL, got 20% XL up. I don't know why. Uh, she also gains 10% MP gain up on top of that. I also don't know why, because she's a blast gorilla. But at least she gets a 10% damage cut, uh, which makes her a bit more tanky. But she also gets immunity to bind. She's completely immune to bind, she can't be bound. Um, she also gets 25% passive status aim resistance and has a 15% chance to defense pierce. By the way, this is the only part of her entire kit that has defense pierce, even though canonically her uh, unique magical ability is to bypass enemy defenses and like strike past armor. That's like her unique cannon ability and she only has one passive 15% defense pierce that does that. Anyway, we see that her active gives her attack up 20% and removes divas from herself. So now that we've seen her entire kit, yeah, like I said, we can kind of see that th there's this one theme that goes across the entirety of her entire kit, removing Diva's stealth, aim and resistance, all of that sort of things. And I have to say right away that having stealth, aim and resistance is better than remove status ailments, because if you don't even get them, then it's basically minus one turn on that um, ailment than if you were to remove it afterwards anyway. But if we actually think about ourselves, okay, but what if there is a situation where we don't need to remove debuffs and we don't need to worry about status ailments, which is a lot of content. A lot, a lot of content where you don't have to worry about either of those things. Then she basically does nothing. She basically does nothing. Like her magia does absolutely nothing in that case. It's attribute strengthened at least, so it deals bonus damage to light element. Her connect only gives attack up. If her active gives 20% attack up, okay, but a bunch of her kit is now useless. Um, I don't know, she doesn't really seem to do, she, she's like really specialized about this idea of like like having quests where you need to remove debuffs or having quests where you need to worry about having a lot of status ailments afflicted to you. And I know that I, I usually say quite a lot that status ailment resistance is rather important, but the thing is that I don't usually say um, that I should say is that status aim resistance is really good if it's additional to other stuff that is good. 
So for example, the, if you had a Memoria that gave 25% attack up and Stellar's M resistance, that would be amazing. But if you had a Memoria that just gave a bunch of Stellar's M resistance, and let's say for example the defense up, maybe that wouldn't be so good after all. It really just comes down to that if you already have something good and you think to yourself, I want something more, I want something uh, that improves what I already have, then Stellar's M resistance is really, really good. But Kanae doesn't even have anything else on to which the Stealth M resistance is the bonus. It's not the bonus, it's just the thing. It's just what Kanae does. So, however, of course, if there are quests where this is rather important, then she can be really, really awesome. However, even despite all of that, don't forget that first off, her attack uh, up 20% is an ability that she has active, ready at any time for uh, with only a 5 turn cooldown. She still has 15% chance to defense pierce, and she's still rather defensive with good defense, with good HP, and with 10% damage cut. So, uh, And she also, of course, passively herself has aim resistance and anti-bind. So even if you don't worry about playing her specifically to that sort of playstyle, um, in that sort of niche scenarios, She's still a dark type blast gorilla with all those things that I've just mentioned. So you can just view her as a defensive blast gorilla with some things here and there that might be good in some situations. So overall, overall, she's still pretty good. Overall, she's still a pretty good character, even though her niche might not be exactly what we need. It's a bit like Batman, but more like the the blast gorilla that we don't even I don't even know what the code goes. More importantly, she also has a personal that removes debuffs on herself and removes those evidence on herself. Awesome. It's basically just another thing that does what she does. Next up though, we have uh, a Mel. Uh, so now that we took a, uh, took a look at a Kane, we're going to take a look at a Mel and we see that she's a support with AABB. Okay. Um, we look take a look at her stats and well, because she was a character that is low of lower uh, rarity, uh, we see that her stats aren't that great at 5 star. But even so, even so, her stats are even worse than you might imagine. She has basically no attack, her HP is kind of alright, but her defense isn't that great. And I know I keep saying this, but yeah, because it's a support type, the stats aren't too great. But personally, I don't think that you should always take this as the way you should evaluate support. Like, you shouldn't always say, it's okay, they have shit stats because there's a, they're a support, because it always comes down to how good their support actually is. Like, if they give really awesome buffs to people, for example, if they give really awesome offensive buffs, defensive buffs, or if they have some sort of really cool, awesome thing that they can do, um, then you might say to yourself, okay, then it doesn't matter that stats are bad. However, if they don't do something really awesome for support abilities, then them having not good stats suddenly is very relevant because th at that point if they don't do something awesome and they have that bad stats then they're just a really bad character. So we need to take a look at how good her support actually is. So what does she actually do? Her connect gives attack up, yeah that's normal. And it gives 100% chance to anti-counter and 100% chance to be completely useless. Uh, so this right down here might not even exist and instead we only have the 100% anti-evade. So 100% anti-evade, how good is that? Well, the thing is you might say to yourself, oh, in mirrors that would be really good, right? Yeah, but you, why would you play uh, support with really bad stats in mirrors that only is there to give anti-evade? That's not really worth it at all to give up an entire character who doesn't do anything else just for that. Not to mention, in order to get that connect, you have to use three discs of her first. So if you play in like a three-man team or a four-man team, first you have to even get her discs, you have to use her discs, and when you use her discs, of course, they're terrible because she has no stats, and only then can you maybe connect with another character to possibly bypass an evade that has like maybe a 15% chance to proc anyway. Kind of seems like a really, really big waste to do that, and will definitely lower your win probability by quite a lot to do that. So, where else can you use it? Well, I always keep bringing this up, but like he could do like the horse in a lot of challenge quests where she's there. She often like has 100% evasion. Some other characters, like I think Sakuya, also might have evasion in a lot of quests. Kanagi also sometimes has evasion. There's some characters. Uh, Master also sometimes, so some of them characters of the light type have sometimes a evasion, like 100% evasion in EX challenge quests, and having a character that can bypass that is pretty good. 
And yeah, that's kind of where the list ends. In some ear challenge quests, like these specifically, she can maybe do something specific for like one turn when she gets to connect. Okay, maybe she got some other stuff. What's her magia? Tenebrous Arcana. Damages all enemies, okay, it's not that, uh, not that good with damage, but who cares about damage? Uh, it does poison, bind, darkness, and skill seal. However, these lower three are uh, not that great in their chance, and sadly, they don't scale. Uh, interesting bit to note, this is a personal. It, it applies status aim resistance down to all enemies uh, with only a 5 turn cooldown, so you can actually use this to set up for a magia to make sure that some of your status aimments uh, are more likely to hit. But let's just say it does at least poison plus potentially a bunch of other stuff to all enemies. That's fine. But the thing is, poison is the worst stealth aim in the entire game. It, it's really, really bad. Skill seal against most enemies won't even do that much. Um, darkness is somewhat fine. But if the enemies hit, it doesn't really do much either. Also, these are, have not not great chances at all. Like these chances of this are not actually that good. Bind can be all right, but the thing is, if you say it's all enemies, you're probably gonna miss a whole bunch of them, and then the rest of them are gonna get their turns just like normal. Um, but mm, I don't know. I, I can see this with more. Uh, excuse me, more. This magia sometimes doing some really good stuff if like if it binds exactly the targets that you need to, or if it applies darkness to an enemy and then they miss, for example. Uh, also, something to note is that this, by the way, might as well say give chance to anti-evade 100% to all of your allies. Because, of course, if an enemy is a, has a status ailment on them, they cannot evade. So, this basically also gives anti-evade, unless the enemy somehow has a lot of ailment resistance or immunities to all of these somehow. So, taking a look at that, so far she doesn't really seem that good, but maybe his spirit enhancement was really good. So if you look at take a look at the spirit enhancement, there's a bunch of stuff in here that's not really too important. Excel up, okay, magia damage up 10%, like it's 10% of support, what, what does it matter? Uh, some blast damage up, what does it matter? The important bits is she gets the skill quicken as a support, that's really good. Um, she gets the stealth and resistance up, awesome, that's also pretty good to make sure that she can keep doing what she does. Um, she gets to charm on attack, okay, sometimes that's gonna be useful, most of the times not, but it's Good to have it, I guess. But more, most importantly, she actually starts the battle with 30 MP if you're on Magi level 5. Awesome. That's a really good thing to have. And M uh, MP uh, gauge increase on battle start or fast mana up or just MP start, I think is it also cards called sometimes, is a pretty good effect and definitely makes a character a lot better than they would be without it. Interactive is actually something, actually something unique. Redraw discs. It's only on a five turn cooldown. It just basically draws a completely new set of discs. Uh, I think it could potentially draw this, uh, some of the same discs you had before, So, but it's completely random again. So if you have a really, really bad turn, uh, you can hit this button and hopefully you get a better disc set, but it doesn't really do anything else. So it basically, also, if you always get good cards, this basically also does nothing. Or if you get good discs twice in a row, this also does nothing. So taking everything that we've just seen and putting it all together, what do we make of Mel? We see that her connect is so incredibly situational that 99 out of 100 times it's completely pointless. Not even 99, 995 out of 1000 times probably. 99.5% of the time it's completely useless, apart from the attack up, which basically all, almost everyone has. Uh, the Magia is decent, but isn't really is usually not something that will like turn the tables in your favor. It's just something that is going to be fine. It's going to be all right. But you might think to yourself, oh, I would like to have more. Like, can I get like maybe an attack buff? Can I, can I get a defense buff? Damage cut or something else? Maybe some debuffs, other debuffs on the enemies, like attack down, defense down, anything like that. But no, it's just a poison, which is the worst effect in the game. Uh, and maybe some other stuff that could potentially be good, potentially does does nothing and her active is at least good like her active to redraw discs can be really good as well but overall overall Mel doesn't have anything about her that is like a decisive advantage 
If you look at other supports in the game that are really good, a lot of them have some really decisive advantage on them. For example, Cut-In and Aos being able to stack up really high that um, damage up a buff, while also having stealth aimants or other debuffs on the enemy and being able to do a lot of stuff, while also having like this one really awesome thing that they do, they're like a Swiss army knife with a giant sword attached to it. They're amazing. You have characters like Madoka who are and mana fountains while also stacking up damage cut. You have... Uh, Characters like Manaka who is cute and also has the attack up um, on their Magia to buff everyone as well. They all do some really cool stuff. You have Kaku with amazing heals, but more importantly has an Excel draw uh, personal which is really awesome. They all have some really cool stuff. And Mel has a bunch of stuff that's just like, uh, sometimes it's good, and most of the time maybe not though. It's, like, it's a bit wishy-washy, not anything that's really decisive that you know is going to be good. And a lot of stuff that, you know, probably isn't good. Which I guess you could kind of say plays into a playstyle, like the divination fortune telling, which is that, hey, maybe sometimes something really awesome happens and you get, like, use your magia and the enemy gets inflicted with all of these stealth aimants and they can't do anything and you're really happy about yourself. Maybe you're in a quest where the enemy has 100% evade and you use this anti-evade to be really awesome and wipe the floor with everything. Maybe you redraw your discs into the perfect disc set or maybe none of this applies and you're completely useless and you have a character sitting on the field with terrible stats. That was that. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.